Get in squares, we're modulating pulse waves. My name is Clint Hoagland, and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In our last video, we discussed a little bit of music theory. Specifically, we talked about major keys and what comprises a major key. In this video, we're going to talk about pulse oscillators and what's called pulse width modulation. Consider a square wave oscillator. As we observed in the filters video, a square wave sounds like this. And if we look at its waveform and audacity, it looks like this. Each cycle of the waveform has a moment where the samples are up here and a corresponding moment where the samples are down here. Let's call the upper moment the waveform's pulse. The ratio of the pulse to the total length of the repeating waveform is called its duty cycle, or alternatively, its pulse width. In a square wave, the duty cycle is fixed at 50%, which is to say the pulse is exactly half the length of the repeating waveform. Put another way, the waveform is twice as wide as the pulse. There's no rule that the pulse width has to be 50%. Square waves have a pulse width of 50%, but the pulse width can be anything between 0 and 100%. We call oscillators that have pulses and variable duty cycles pulse oscillators, and in Chuck, we can make those using the pulse osc UGen. Pulse OSC can behave exactly like a square OSC, and by default it sounds like a square OSC as well. The difference between a pulse OSC and a square OSC is that the pulse OSC Eugen also has a width property. This allows you to set the pulse width. By default, it's set to 50% and it sounds like a square OSC. Let's change it to 0.3 and hear what that pulse width sounds like. If we look at it in Audacity, it looks like this. Note that the pulse width is no longer equal to half the waveform, it's now 30%. Now let's change it to 0.1 and hear what that sounds like. In Audacity, it looks like this. Now let's look at 0.01 and hear that. In Audacity, it looks like this. Finally, let's set it to zero and listen to that. It sounds like nothing, but technically if we look at it in Audacity, we can see that it's actually introduced an offset. This waveform is the all not pulse part of a pulse waveform. Okay, so what can we do with pulse oscillators musically? You probably noticed that, as we varied the pulse width, that changed the timbre of the sound. As the pulse part of the wave gets thinner, the sound gets correspondingly thinner as well. This means we can get quite a bit of timbral variety using a single oscillator with no filter. Let's try playing the same set of ascending arpeggios with a width of 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10. You might have noticed that, as the pulse width got thinner, that example sounded a bit like an early arcade game or video game console. That's because early consoles used pulse oscillators for their timbral variety. For example, the 8-bit Nintendo Entertainment System had two pulse oscillators, a triangle oscillator, and a noise source as its music subsystem. Shouts to Koji Kondo for making all those iconic scores like Super Mario Bros. and Legend of Zelda with three oscillators and a noise source. One very fun thing you can do with a pulse oscillator is what's called pulse width modulation, or PWM for short. If you attach an LFO to the pulse width, that will change the duty cycle over time. This creates a very familiar and characteristic synth sound. Because the duty cycle varies over time, it creates the psychoacoustic impression that the oscillator's pitch is vibrating. Let's take a look at a chuck file I made that utilizes pulse width modulation. Okay, let's go through this line by line. We've got a pulse oscillator, a, which goes into a low pass, uh, low pass filter which goes into an envelope generator, which goes into the digital audio converter. Then we have it going into a wave out, which goes into a black hole. And that's just so I can record this for diagnostic purposes if I want to look at it. Then we've got a, a triangle oscillator, which I'm calling LFO. And that goes into black hole. Here I've turned off the low pass filter because I'm not actually using it in this to, uh, demo. And then we go from this envelope here that goes into two delays. I'm setting the... Uh, Oh, the low pass frequency, which I'm not actually using right now. Setting the maximum delay, file name for that thing, uh, the diagnostic file. Setting a base frequency for the oscillator, just uh, as I'm setting it up. Setting the oscillator gain to 25. Setting the oscillator width to 0.1 to start. Um, and that, that probably won't get used. Then we do some stuff where I'm just setting up the delays so that they make like a stereo delay. Setting up a chord, in this case, this is a uh, minor ninth chord, which has got a minor third, perfect fifth, minor seventh, and then a major ninth. 
Set the offset to 36, set the gain of the LFO to 0.5, and the frequency of the LFO to 1.5. I'm going to change that later on, I think. And then here's where the LFO is actually doing its thing. We're going to turn this off at first. So I want, to, I want you to hear what it sounds like before I turn on the LFO. And then let's set the... Or we got, I'm setting the envelope here. Um, and then I'm it, just right in here, just for, so it's easier to see, let's set the oscillator width in here. Uh, let's see. We're going to set it to 0 0.5. Just so we can hear what this sounds like with a square wave. And as you can see, I've set... So I'm logging to the console what the current width is. So that's what it sounds like with a square wave. Let's set it so that we get, we're just going to change the oscillator width to 0 0.1 so you can hear what that sounds like. So you can hear how that's kind of got that video gamey sort of uh, thin pulse sound. Now let's turn on the LFO. The LFO's period is uh, yeah. We're we're gonna set it right in here so you can see it uh, see it working. It's currently set to 0 0.01, which is really slow. Slow, and we're gonna watch the pulse width in the console as it plays, so you can hear how that's changing when it's changing really slow. Did I do something wrong? Yes. I did something wrong. Uh, that's hooked up, but we don't want to set this in here. Let's try this. I think that might have just been the, the logging being wrong. There we go. So you can hear it getting thinner. So you heard that go from a square wave to a very thin pulse wave back to square wave. Now let's make this uh, LFO go a little faster. Um, let's take it out of here. Let's see how this, if this works a little better. All right, so we're gonna set that to 0 0.05. See how that sounds.
So you can hear how that's sort of sounding like it's getting a change, like it's got a filter on it, but that's not what's happening. It's the, just the changing of the pulse width that's making that sound. Now let's uh, change it to 0 0.1. We're going to double that speed. You hear that, how this sounds? So now it's going faster than our logging thing is going to give us any, uh, it's, the, the logging thing isn't giving us anything interesting anymore because it's, uh, the LFO is traveling a lot faster than the logging statement is reporting it. But uh, we can hear that starting to speed up. Let's switch, the, let's multiply this by five. So now it's 0 0.5. So you can hear it's starting to get sort of a classic uh, 80s synth score sound. I'm going to change the gain to 0.45 because it's going all the way to, uh, to nothing, and that's not what we want. I'm going to change this, the frequency up to 1 now. So this is going to be 1 hertz. So that's what that sounds like when it's one, uh, the LFO is going at one. How about 1.5? Actually reminds me very strongly of Ladytron, if you remember that uh, early 2000s band. Let's change, uh, because it's seeming like a little much, let's change the gain and see how that changes the sound at this, uh, at this rate. So that's, uh, if the gain is down a little bit, now let's turn it, the LFO way up. Let's change it to five hertz and see what that sounds like. So that's sounding very much like a uh, LFO that's attached to the pitch, but it's only attached to the pulse width, as we said before. All right, uh, let's crank it. Let's go up to like 50. See what that sounds like. It's probably going to have a lot of clicks in it. So what that's doing... What that's doing is actually 50 is in the uh, audible range. So what we have there is a LFO that's actually no, no longer really a low frequency oscillator, but just an oscillator that's modulating the thing, which actually gives you, a, there's something else you can do. It's easier in Chuck than it's you can in a regular hardware synthesizer. You can make your Chuck low frequency oscillator a multiple of 
your oscillator's frequency. So it becomes a sort of a sub oscillator. So let's hear how that sounds. make it just like half of the frequency so it's down an octave. And lastly, let's make it go really nuts. And I'm gonna turn this off. And we're gonna make it go anywhere from uh, 10 hertz to 100 hertz. So you can hear you can make some uh, kind of cool, uh, big spooky synth sounds. And keep in mind, I've just got the one pulse oscillator and the one LFO multi modulating the pulse width and a couple of delays. And that's how you make that sound. In this tutorial, we discuss Chuck's pulse oscillator and how to use its width property to make some interesting sounds. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at file IO again. This time, we'll look at some fun things to do with text output.